Welcome. Thanks for coming. As Randy just said, my name is David Rivas, and I'm the CTO over at Rigetti Computing. Now, a couple of things have changed at Rigetti uh, in, the last, uh, in the last year or so, uh, but this hasn't changed. The, the idea that the world's most powerful computers are going to be quantum enabled is essential to really everything that Rigetti does. And we've been doing it for a pretty long time. I have very little trouble describing Rigetti computing as a pioneer. We've been doing quantum computing, building qubits and systems for 10 years. <clears throat> if you look through this list of, of dates and some of the milestones associated with these dates, you're going to find a, a collection of themes that I want to highlight a few for you. One is we are a full stack company. What does that mean? Well, it starts with the fact that we own our own fab to produce our own chips and we take those chips and put them into a cryostat, which we don't build, but almost all the hardware that goes inside that cryostat, we build. We build our own uh, uh, control systems. Uh, we build all of the software necessary to talk to those control systems, including the software in the control systems. I think of FPGAs, frankly, as, as a software. Um, that software consists of a distributed operating system that provides access to and scheduling of the machines, uh, an API to get at it, an SDK, a Python SDK, to engage that uh, API. And then we build a cloud system of our own right on top of that. Uh, we also do work in algorithm development and application development. So that's what we mean by full stack. Another theme here is scale. So from the beginning, from the first qubits we built in, in or 2013, 2014, we've been steadily increasing the size and capability of our QPUs. In 2022, uh, we fielded the largest QPU on the Amazon Bracket network. That was our 80Q Aspen M3. Um, it, it's important to underline that system because it was one of the three systems we produced that were built on our multi-chip technology. This is the first in the industry, in the quantum industry, to support multi-chip construction of superconducting QPUs. That 80Q processor consisted of two 40Q chips which obtained entanglement coupling of qubits across chip boundaries at the same performance as the same coupling on chip. <clears throat> uh, another important theme here is hybrid quantum classical computation and the cloud. Hybrid quantum classical computation, frankly, is just admitting the fact that all quantum computation involves a collection of classical resources, usually driving uh, the quantum processor. Uh, that requires a system, by the way, to manage that well. And if you're looking for high performance, it requires a system that's actually capable of engaging that high performance with those resources. Cloud is simply uh, acknowledging that a collection of those resources is likely to be up in the cloud. Cloud also acknowledges that one of the most important distribution mechanisms for services based on quantum computing will be through cloud. This is certainly what's happened with classical computing uh, over the last few years. Um, that's not to say we don't do on-prem or don't believe in on-prem. Uh, quite a bit of the market will continue to be on-prem. HPC will certainly be on-prem. And there's lots of, uh, of security-related concerns that drive certain kinds of on-prem activities. But by and large, we think in the future, as we get toward the end, it'll be cloud-based. Here's another thing that hasn't changed. Everything we do at Rigetti is aligned towards getting to quantum advantage. Now, we think of quantum advantage as being essentially a systems problem. So it's not just about building high performance qubits and a lot of them. We all do that. Um, it's also about constructing the full system, part of what I just described in talking about full stack, necessary to solve a problem well for a, a customer. Um, the fact that we're full stack makes it easy for us and is a benefit for us in terms of doing that work at speed and scale. We are in a position to do the necessary tuning of the various components involved, ensure the various components involved are high performance, and then eke out the most performance by engaging with each of those in terms of how they interact with each other. Perhaps one of the most important assets that we have with respect to speed and scale is our Fab One, not far away from here, in Fremont. Uh, since 2016, Fab One has been fabbing our chips for development and for production use. They fab all of our chips uh, at, at this point. We have a very unique mission that we require out of Fab One. <clears throat> on the one hand, 
We need what is very much like a production facility. No, no we're not you know, building hundreds of thousands or millions of wafers a year to extraordinarily high yields with a collection of products that ship in very, very large numbers. But we do need a fab that's capable of embracing process in such a way that we can reliably incrementally increase uh, and grow that process to a production result on a regular basis. Perhaps a better way of putting this is that when the fab comes to us and says, we can deliver that new design to spec at a particular time, we need to know that they have both the integrity of process and rigor and able to deliver on that promise. And I'm very proud to say that they do that regularly with us. So fab is, is both a critical asset for us and it's one that has uh, produced significant returns uh, over the last couple of years. Now I'd like to talk about a very uh, fab-driven result. We are about uh, to publicly release our Anka 2 processor with uh, an increase in error performance of more than double. That is, we're decreasing the error rates of our Anka 2 processor by more than half. This is something new this year. Earlier this year, we announced that our strategy was going to change a bit. We are going to focus on performance of qubits at the expense of going rushing to market with ever-increasing qubit counts. We also made a, a, a public goal out of reaching a less than 1% error performance um, in 2024, so 99% 99, 99 plus 2 qubit uh, meeting gate fidelities. 2022 and 2023 have been all about moving from the Aspen fixed coupler architecture to our Anka tunable coupler uh, uh, square lattice architecture. And this is all in pursuit of performance. Tunable couplers give us very fast gates. Uh, the square lattice give us better connectivity and a denser lattice. All of this supports the increase in performance that we're looking for. In, 20, in, in the end of 2022, in Q4 of 2022, we introduced Aspen M3 into the market with a two qubit median fidelity of 95%. Uh, two quarters later, we introduced the Anka 1 uh, system internally and to a select few of customers with that sort of same 95% two qubit performance, 5% uh, uh, two qubit errors. We were very comfortable with this because the amount of change that was involved in moving from Anka to Aspen is massive. Changes, of course, on the chip, but throughout the entire system, most of the insides of the fridge had to change. The control systems had to grow and significantly change. Software supporting those control systems had to grow and change. The native gate set had to be redeveloped and changed. It was a tremendous amount of energy and effort. Just to sort of capture some of the complexity here, it's worth noting that, that um, if, you consider, if you consider our transmons, actually the pair of transmons, the squids, that make up our qubits, they don't look so different from the squids that make up our tunable couplers. If you count all of those together, that's 233 qubits on an 84 qubit processor. That's a, that, that really is a significant increase in, in overall uh, uh, complexity. So Anka 1 was introduced at 95% in Q2. Um, in Q4, I'm very, very proud to announce and excited to announce that we inter are introducing uh, Anka 2 with a 2.3% uh, two qubit gate error rate. This is, as I said, more than double the previous two systems and represents a 97.7 uh, uh, two qubit fidelity. Um, we're saying actually that the error rates will be lower than that 2.3 percent. And we're saying that because, well, I just heard this morning that we might have done something good in the last couple of days to actually uh, decrease uh, the error rates. I'm actually quite confident that will hit the, the desired 98% or 2% error rate goal sometime in the next uh, set of weeks. Um, there was a lot of change that went in from Anka 1 to Anka 2. Anka, Anka 2 has a new JJ process yielding fewer two level systems, increasing our two qubit fidelities. We introduced a superconducting PCB requiring less flux current to operate the system, helping with our thermal profile and helping with our coherence times. And electronics improvements, including electronics improvements in the control system, yield lower flux noise, also helping us with our overall performance. Uh, the, the, the trajectory of first M3, then Anka 1, now Anka 2, and the speed of that trajectory, as well as the engineering improvements that have been made, 
gives us an awful lot of confidence that we're going to meet our goals in 24 of less than 1% uh, uh, two qubit error performance. Oh, there we go. All of our customers get access to our, uh, to our QPUs through QCS. QCS is that, stock, that stack of software that I just described. QCS is a platform that enables both the access to the QPUs, uh, but also the development and execution of hybrid applications. That includes QCS Direct, which is the full system that includes all the classical resources necessary to run an application, and which our customers use on a regular basis. It includes QCS Anywhere, with many of, which many of our partners use, to integrate their own resources into that high performance connection to our QPUs. And QCS also powers our QPUs when they're on uh, public clouds like Amazon's AWS Bracket Service or on the Azure Cloud. Um, most users, uh, most developers, access our QCS system with our software development kit, uh, Pipewell. We've just released Pipewell 4. Uh, there's a blog post about it on the website. Go have a look at what's going on there. We, we've seen something like a 10x improvement in throughput um, because of some changes we've recently made. What we've done is we've re-engineered re the PyQuil stack to use the Rust programming languages. For the, for the software folks out there, you're probably familiar with Rust. It's a high performance language, not unlike C. And what we did was we built libraries that work very, very fast, and then we did bindings from the PyQuil software to those libraries. This is very similar, by the way, to the bindings you get when you use NumPy. NumPy is largely a high performance numerics library written in C with PyQuil on top of it. So we're using essentially the same technique. All of our Anka processors require PyQuil v4 and benefit from uh, the speed improvement that we get. Um, we have a unique uh, way of attacking uh, or of engaging uh, partnerships. We try very hard to ensure that any kind of partner relationship that we have is focused on moving the bar forward on the innovation associated with quantum advantage. So this is not really a business item for us as much as it is a, a tool that we can engage the community to get the best possible results as we strive for quantum advantage. Yeah, money changes hand from time to time. And we certainly, with partners, will go to funding agencies to find ways uh, to, uh, to pay for the work. But the real, the real focus here is on delivering value through innovation. Um, one example of this is our DARPA Honest program. We've been collaborating with NASA and USRA to solve complex scheduling problems, and we've made some pretty good results and uh, done, uh, have recently introduced a new iterative method that is state-of-the-art uh, for optimization problems on superconducting. Another interesting bit of work that we've done is machine learning, uh, specifically targeting finance. Um, one of the collaborations that I'll highlight for you is, is particularly intriguing to me. What's happening here is we're taking what is a very simple to state problem, a machine learning classification problem, and then we're applying some quantum techniques to get an improvement. The, the problem is taking a financial time series and then trying to classify it as either being generated from a particular known distribution or not. It's a hard problem. It's fundamental to, to finance. And we are starting to see some improvements with this in, in uh, our work, in, in quantum enhanced work. Probably one of the most sort of our best partnership in some sense has been the, S the partnership we have the, with uh, the NQI uh, SQMS Center out of Fermilab. Fermilab uh, and Rigetti collaborate on material science, on qubit architecture, on algorithms, um, and a wide variety of other things. They make uh, very extensive use of our fab. And they've recently installed a 9Q processor from us in, in sort of pride of place in their, in their quantum garage. Uh, our fab also sees a lot of work with AFRL. I know that was mentioned in an earlier talk. Um, AFRL um, is, uh, we've we recently engaged AFRL with an IDIQ contract, and that contract allows us to not only continue working with AFRL, but to work with some of their partners, and so we'll be continuing to work with our fab services with a collection of, of universities and research facilities uh, from around the world. One last thing about partnerships here. We've had a very long and very uh, profitable and, or valuable rather relationship with Innovate UK. Innovate UK is an agency out of the UK that provides for funding for a broad variety of projects, but in particular has an important quantum uh, organization. Uh, with, through IU, the IUK, we were able to launch our first UK-based UK quantum processor along with Oxford Instruments as a partner, and we housed it at Oxford Instance, Instruments. Um, that uh, that uh, QPU is going to be uh, upgraded to the latest Anka technology. In fact, that's happening as we speak. 
A couple of other things that have been able to be relationship with IUK is we've been doing more machine learning methods uh, for finance with a variety of banks and universities. Um, one thing I'll have, I, I think the Moody's folks might be in the audience tonight. Moody's and Imperial College and us are working on um, some very interesting signal, signal, ah, signature kernel enhanced uh, work to do rare event detection, so re recession prediction. And that's starting to show results. The last uh, partner uh, I want to talk about is Riverlane, also a UK company. We've been doing a lot of uh, air correction work with Riverlane. Uh, they had access, early access, to our Anka 1 uh, processor. And we've recently given them access to a, a 9Q processor to continue uh, some of that work. Now, <clears throat> For uh, well, throughout this talk, actually, you've heard me talk a little bit about 9Q. Um, in the five years that I've been at Rigetti, one of the things that I have heard over and over again is customers, partners, and others alike, the market basically saying, gee, wouldn't it be great if we could have a couple of high performing qubits, you know, three qubits, four qubits, something like that? For the most part, we've dismissed this as something that is just not worth the time to spend on right now. We have 84 qubit processors up in the, in the cloud. Uh, you can find a good three qubit lattice if that's something that you like. But in the last year, we spent some time talking to customers, mostly customers that are deep into superconducting, often have their own dilution fridges, are opinionated about the control systems that they use, or maybe even want to build their own control systems, and are talking very much about hands-on work with a QPU that they could do. So I'm very proud to announce today the release of the introducing the Novera QPU. This is a 9Q Anka class system. Um, we've, we've sold two of these so far. One of them is to the uh, SQMS lab, and the other is to an unnamed uh, uh, defense lab. Uh, both of them have purchased, received delivery, and are now starting to use these processors. At an under $1 million price point, uh, Novera can be coupled with a dilution fridge and control system to build a very powerful quantum computing system for under $2 million. We don't think there's anything like it in the marketplace right now. Nine qubits of tunable couplers and uh, tunable qubits um, uh, and coming from, the great, from our technology. More importantly, probably perhaps most importantly, it's available immediately. The idea here is if you've got a dilution fridge, you can take a Novera QPU, plug it in, cable it up, hook it up to your control systems, and you're in the business now of having a quantum com computing system that you can actually use. Many labs, many academic institutions have this kind of capability. Let's take a quick uh, and closer look at the Novera QPU. As it turns out, the Novera QPU actually has 14 qubits in it. It's the 9 qubit chip, which is the Anka chip, uh, 3 by 3 array of tunable transmons. Um, and the tunable couplers. We've included a second chip. This is five isolated simple transmon qubits, which are separate and independently addressable. Um, what we found is the, the complexity associated with bringing up a full 9Q Anka system is both resource intensive and requires expertise. Our customers seem to find a lot of value in being able to validate and characterize their hardware by using the five qubit chip inside the, the uh, Novera. It also serves as a useful tool for training new quantum engineers. Included in the Novera QPU are the two chips, the puck, the container for the chips, which also includes a PC board for wiring, the tower, which mounts to the mixing chamber plate of your dilution fridge into which the puck is attached and provides uh, the, the, the thermal path to cool the chip, uh, we have a, a can, a, a shield can that is uh, focused on infrared and magnetic field um, isolation. Uh, we provide signal chain components, including diplexers and filters and uh, tupas in our case. We also have all of those mounted on payload brackets that serve to mount the, the signal chain components that we provide you, but also provide you with an ability to mix and match your own components there. As I said, this is really about a very hands-on system. Um, I'm excited to announce that Novera will be uh, on our own QCS starting almost immediately, and that the performance characteristics of Novera will be on the order of 98.5% uh, two qubit gate fidelities and, and uh, coherence times T1s in the sort of uh, you know, 10, uh, 15 to, to plus seconds. We believe Novera has been built for the quantum industry as it is today, uh, not some distant future. Um, 
we use, we use 9Q Nuvera-like systems in just about everything we do. Every new design gets put through a 9Q. Every new system that we have, every new change in the system usually gets tested with uh, some form of 9Q. We've done algorithm experiments with it. We've done error mitigation integration with it. We've done uh, QEC experiments with it. Uh, we've done control and electronic software testing. It makes a very good test bed for software systems and other components that need to be characterized or validated, validated or otherwise test. We test our measurement and calibration software. Software. We test QCS on it. All of the native gate architecture work that we do, whenever we add a new native gate or do research on that, can get done on a 9Q system. No Novara has a wide variety of use cases that span research, academics, education, and industry. Indeed, we think you can do just about anything you might want to do with Novara, from building a 9Q cloud system to educating the next generation of the quantum workforce. And it really is available today. Thank you very much. If you want more information about Novera, you can go to rigetti.com slash Novera. And again, thank you everybody for coming. Mm -hmm.